Hey, it's Matt from DIY Electronics and this is the Creality Ender 3 Pro. Safety first. Okay, so in the box you get a piece of foam, you get the instructions, you get a power cable, you get the screen, get a power supply. Now, this is one of the improvements over the Ender 3. This is a super high quality Meanwell power supply, so you can go ahead and cancel your fire insurance. Cut that. This is a super high quality Meanwell power supply, so then you get a little needle to clean the nozzle if it jams, SD card and a reader, a bunch of spares, and some free filament to try out before you go to your expensive nice filament. Get little trimmers for filaments, a bunch of tools to take it apart and put it together, a little spatula, a bunch of screws to put the printer together, more foam, then, you know, the printer, the Z-axis motors, the filament holder, the Z lead screw, more foam, and finally, you wouldn't have guessed it, but a cardboard box. You can use this for things like cardboard purposes. For assembly, we're first going to put the arms onto the main frame. You get these two little sets of extrusions. You want to take the, the big ones. There are two arms. The one only has holes at the bottom and the other one has a single hole near the middle and then one near the bottom. You want to take this one and you want the hole that's at the bottom to be lower down. Now take that and put it on the right side of the printer. The bolts you need are the M5 45s, so grab those and grab the Allen key from the tool set that will fit these. Now grab one of the bolts, grab one of the washers, stick it over the bolt, and then we're going to screw it in from the bottom of the printer. These holes you want to be on the inside facing towards the printer, so like that. Then do the same with the other one. Make these tight so the bars can't move at all, but obviously don't strip the screws. Now grab the next extrusion, the one with the holes near the bottom. And once again, you're gonna put these holes near the bottom, but now on the left side over here. Now we're going to install the power supply and the screen. Firstly for the power supply, grab M420s. Now take the power supply and it goes on the right side of the printer with the power plug facing outwards. Once that's screwed in, you have to make sure that you set the right voltage for the power supply. Flip it around 
and you'll see the little voltage selector. Make sure that's correct for your voltage. For South Africa, it's 230 volts. Now we're gonna take the M58 and the screen. We're gonna flip the printer around to its front and on the front of the printer, you'll see there's holes in the extrusion where you can screw in the screen. Next, we're going to take the Z-axis limit switch and we're gonna install it on the left side of the printer. On the left extrusion, we're gonna put the nut inside here. So take your Allen key and just loosen these. Then with these vertical, push them into the slot here. With both of them in, push it down to the bottom and the little notch at the right must rest on the base. Once it's there, screw these both in. Next we're going to do the z-axis. So grab the z-axis motor and the 418 screws. Flip the printer around and now you're going to put the z-axis motor against the vertical arm over there. And then you're going to use these to screw it in in the two holes in the black plastic. Now take the threaded Z lead screw and put it in the top and tighten up these two bolts over here. Next you want to get the longer of the two smaller extrusions. Then get two of the M416s. Get the big chunk of motors and stuff with the QR code on. Now this extrusion has a, a big hole over there. That is going to fit over this over here. So we're gonna take that and that's gonna fit over there. Now these are gonna screw into the other two holes over there, but from the back side. While we're working on this, you can also just grab this connector and connect it to the extruder motor over here. Now take this and with the QR code facing downwards, you want to slide the actual hot end over it. So there are these little runner wheels at the back. You want the single runner wheel to be at the bottom and the other two at the top. And then this extrusion will just slide into them and it should slide very smoothly along there. Once that's on there, grab two more 416s and this triangle piece with these runner wheels. Flip this whole thing around so you can see the back of it. And you'll see in this extrusion, there's another big hole over here and then there's two smaller holes for screws to go through. With the wheels facing this way, you can place it over there. You'll tell it's in the right place because this fits into the hole over there. So that slots in there, and then take two bolts and screw it in. Now grab the belt, and on the back of the hot end assembly that slides across, you'll notice little notches. We want this belt to fit inside there, and it uses these little gold clamps to keep it secured there. This belt has to run all the way on the inside of the extrusion from the top, all the way around, around that little wheel inside there. Once you have the belt around, you can hook it into the notch. Then take the other side, put it around, and hook it into the other notch. Now flip this whole setup around, and on the front side, we're going to take this little piece, and we're going to screw it in to the extrusion over here. It doesn't screw into a hole, it's these little T-nuts. So the belt is going to fit around this bearing over here and then you move it as far right as you can to make the, the belt tight. Then just fit the bearing in. And once it's all together like that, 
you can tighten these while pushing the whole piece right so that the belt stays tight. Now go ahead and cut this cable tie without obviously damaging any of the wires. Now you can lift up the entire gantry and with the nozzle downwards, you're gonna fit it over here and the lead screw is gonna go through the little gold thread over there. Once that's on there, you wanna tighten the two little screws that are next to the Z lead screw, but you don't want to tighten them a lot, just a little bit. Now grab the remaining extrusion and the 525 bolts, and you're gonna screw this into the top extrusions. At the top should be the silver drilled out holes where the heads of these bolts will fit down into. Once this is on, you can take the two little plastic covers and just click them in the sides. Now we're gonna put on the spool holder. You need the remaining two M58s. You need this little plastic screw guy. You need the metal bit and you need the pipe. So now I just stick the pipe through the hole, put the plastic screw around it and then just spin it so it's tight. Now take the two screws and you put them through, then lightly attach the T-nuts so the screw goes into the T like that and the top of the T is away from it. Now you can just put it onto the top of the extrusion, take your Allen key and tighten it. The last thing to do is to wire everything up, which is pretty simple. You just need to plug a few things in. So first, let's plug in the power. There are these two XT60 plugs. So just pull it across under the wire and plug it in there. It'll only go one way. Now take this cable, which has the three connectors on it. Find the one that says E for extruder and you can plug that into this motor over here which is the extruder inside here you'll see a little connector there that will be this one with three little holes and it'll say X on it and finally take the other one that says X and just plug it into the bottom of the motor now you want to plug the ribbon cable into the screen. Looking from the back, you want to plug it into the one on the far right. Flipping the printer around, you'll find this connector that says Z, and it'll go into the Z limit switch over here. The last thing to do is to plug the Z in, which is obviously the Z axis. Now take the Bowden tube, and you're gonna just push it into the end over here. Push it as far as it'll go, and then it shouldn't be able to come out. You can just pull this ring back to make sure that it doesn't come out. And finally, the last thing we need to do is to plug it in and turn around. To load in the filament, take your little trimmers and just cut it at an angle so it feeds in easy. Just so it's sharp like that. Then push it through the hole, squeeze the extruder, and then you should be able to push it through. Push it all the way down until it won't go anymore. Now on the screen, let's preheat the nozzle. So just click in the button, rotate to prepare, then go down to preheat PLA. You'll see it sets the target temperature of the nozzle to 185 degrees, and the value below it is what the current temperature is. Once it gets up to temperature, you can manually feed the plastic in 
the same way as when you were loading it. So at the extruder side, just push the plastic through until it starts melting out the nozzle. If that goes through correctly, then you're ready to print. To level the bed, first click in the wheel, go to prepare, and then auto home. Now on the screen, click in the button again, go to prepare, and then disable steppers. That'll allow you to freely move around everything. Now move the nozzle so that it's at the front left corner of the bed, then take a piece of normal A4 paper and slide it underneath. You want the paper to have some friction with the nozzle but not be too tight. You can adjust the wheel to make it tighter or looser. So mine is too loose here, so I'll go anti-clockwise until it's touching the paper. Now it's lightly gripping the paper and I can pull the paper away but when I push it, it, it folds up. That's sort of where I, I like it to be. Now slide it across, do the same thing on the right corner, then at the back right, and then at the back left. Now I repeat the process again because changing any one of them sort of changes the rest of them too. And then maybe just repeat it a third time. With the printer on, the bed level and the filament loaded, we can try out one of the test prints on the SD card. So insert the SD card on the left side of the printer. Then on the screen, click in the button, go down to init SD card, and then go to print from SD. There'll be a few options. We want to try the test dog. The rest are installation guides and manuals and stuff. So just click in on the test dog. It'll now set the nozzle temperature to 185 and the bed temperature to 50. When both those temperatures reach the target temperature, it'll start printing. That's actually the end of the video, so you can stop watching. But I thought this was pretty cool, so I'm just putting it in at the end. With all the power cuts and load shedding that South Africa has been getting recently, I decided to test the power resume feature, which is a feature where if you lose power, you can carry on the print afterwards. Once power comes back, it will home the X and Y again, and then it just carries on printing. In this first test, I try to pull the power at the worst possible moments on the outer shell. In the same print, I tested it again, slightly higher up in the print, but this time while it was printing the infill. and it actually works really, really well. In this video, you can see a small defect that was caused by the nozzle sitting on the edge of the print for quite a long time, but that's about the worst I ever got. If you look slightly higher up on the print, that's where I canceled the second time, and it's 
sort of really hard to find where I pulled the power out.